giving you a voice, making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. And now let's take a look at the first robot. Ethan, let's take it away. Yeah, so this is Team 448. Um, it was designed by Osin of FTC 16404, and they placed 16th. So this is a robot that I, a lot of these robots I really love um, when people take a little more simple aspect um, and definitely makes um, robots a lot more viable, I think, in a real life competition. They're not as complex and they may not score quite as high in the rubric, but I really love to see them. And this is a great example of a simple but still very custom robot that I think would perform really well in real life. And it placed it in this really solid rank of 16th. Just wanted to jump in real quick and introduce the rest of our judges. Uh, we've got, my name is Deets, sorry DT if you haven't known. We've got Ethan from GoBuilder here. We've also got Andrew from FTC Team 8417, as well as Jay from FRC 1058. Uh, thank you to everybody for helping us uh, judge. And Nate, he wasn't be, uh, unfortunately wasn't be able to join us today, but uh, we're going to be the four judges that will be presenting the results of the challenge. And then the next team. All right, yep. Jake. Yep, so our next team in rank 26th was team 282. Um, so this robot was designed by a group of rookie designers. And the judges as a whole thought for the first time in a catathon that they did phenomenally. Um, in terms of intaking toxins, they have a ramp to push them into the container. And to lift the container, they feature a rack and pinion. Um, we suggest for future use to maybe not use compliant wheels for your drivetrain, as well as the core hex motors, as historically they tend to break. Um, instead, potentially use planetary gear motors. But overall, this was a great design for our first time catters. And if you take a look, a closer look at the robot, you can even see some custom pieces. Okay. All right, so next up in 19th place, we have Team 687 Iron Re, which uh, the team was composed of Jose from FD6, uh, 6832 Iron Rain. Um, this was an extremely unique robot, and I really enjoyed judging it. Um, it reminded me a lot of Iron Rain's FTC robots that they built for competition. Um, it's very innovative, and I just have a couple little pointers uh, for future. Um, the combined toxin and catalyst intake I really like. Um, the only issue I have with it is it has a very small capacity for both uh, toxins and catalysts. You're allowed to hold as many of each as you need, and holding only like seven to eight toxins in one catalyst is not uh, is obviously not going to be optimal if you can hold more and do and go faster. Um, also, the drivetrain uh, it's not like any other drivetrain I've seen before. Um, <laughs> And I really like that, but I'm not sure if it would be able to clear the terrain in the center of the field um, called the valley due to the side plates being so low to the ground and the wheels not providing enough um, protection against uh, beaching. As well as the container intake, um, it looks good. It just looks a little bit unfinished. Um, there's motors at the back that I don't know what they're for. Um, <laughs> they appear to be either for another set of wheels maybe or possibly for uh, rotating the arms uh, which is kind of unclear to me but other than that I think this robot was extremely well designed um, especially for it being just a one-person team um, the cat is all excellent and I really like it yeah so next up we've got our 15th ranked team they are team 439. This is composed of Sam, Justin, and Cece. Um, they're both from three different teams with super long names. But overall, I did really like their robot. Um, I really liked that their renders did a good job of showing their robot interacting with the game elements. It always helps a ton in the judging process. Um, and I personally love six-wheel drives, so this one definitely wins my heart in that regard. 
I'm not super sold on the intake. I think it'd be great for the toxins, um, but those catalysts were pretty heavy. So that was my only dock against it. I lo really liked the color schemes, and overall, I think you guys did a great job. Alrighty. In uh, 25th place, we've got Team 872, and this is just Soul Catter Jonas from FTC Team 365 Mo. And what we really liked about this robot was that it seemed very practical uh, to build in real life and compete on an actual game field against other robots. And starting out with the bottom of the robot, uh, you know, we saw a really reliable drivetrain that uses mechanism wheels with, you know, a cutout in the middle to effectively cross the valley. And we've seen this in numerous other robots in CDC, as well as in actual in real life games like in Rover Ruckus. Uh, this team's intakes uh, draw similarities to past tried and true intake rollers, which means that it's very capable of intaking the toxins into the container holding zone without too much of a difficulty. And just a little bit of a pointer, something that we would have liked to see a bit more in this robot was a bit of aesthetics and personality. Uh, with the colors in this robot being mostly <laughs> monochrome, uh, some color and pocketing would really allow this robot to stand out on the playing field. So moving into 12th place, we have team 228 uh, manned by Atman, Jack, and Mason from FTC teams 17, 4, 56, and 42, 21. So I personally really liked this robot. It's super unique and super versatile ac across everything it does. The eight-wheel center drop drivetrain allows for incredible pushing power as well as agility, and they have no issues crossing the valley. And their intake mechanism for toxins is tried and true. Super great work there. Our only concern in regards to this robot was that it does not attempt toxins. Or, sorry, my bad. It does not attempt catalysts. It does toxins. Um, so this robot doesn't do catalysts, and as we saw at the beginning, the ability to boost your score by 10%, these are a huge aspect of the game. All right. Uh, up next, in 24th place, we have Team 732, the Super Sports Squad, composed from of Daniel, Nathan, Rex, Chris, and Scott from what I believe is FDC Team 15010. Um, and overall, uh, for a rookie team, I was super impressed by their CAD. Um, it is super well done and looks very complete. Um, there were a couple things that I was worried about. Um, for instance, this robot is about 19.2 inches tall, uh, which does not fit within the sizing box. Um, and that's something that you'd have to fix uh, for a real game. Um, and then I really like the toxin intake. I think it is an... Is it, uh, sorry. I think that it is an excellent design and would be super effective in the game. However, the container intake... Um, being composed of just two um, squares of rev extrusion mounted to servos. I'm not sure if that would be strong enough to hold a full container. Um, they do get pretty heavy when they're full of a whole bunch of toxins. And without some of sort of support on the bottom, I'm not sure that the servos would be able would be strong enough to hold it up. Um, but other than that, I really like this robot um, and them being first time catters. Uh, for this challenge, it kind of blew me away how how well they did. Mm -hmm. For sure. Um, next up, we've got our 17th ranked team. Uh, they're team 407. Cat, um, they're, I believe, a one man team, cad by Brogan of FCC team 14130. This is another one of my favorite examples of a very nice, simple robot that I think would perform really darn well. I think this is a really solid blend of some COTS parts and using those where it's easy and also a lot of nice custom parts. Um, I really like their double reverse four bar linkage um, as their deposit mechanism and their chain bar linkage as another aspect of their deposit mechanism was also really cool. Um, this is another one of those intakes that I'm not 100% sure could do Catalyst, but definitely be worth a shot. And depending on the material of those tubes, might work after all. Um, 
I did want to highlight this drivetrain. It's one of a few of this kind of drivetrain we've seen in the, C the CDC, but we have not seen it in real life very much, um, where they have center traction wheels and corner mechanum wheels that can actuate back and forth. It creates, um, it gives this robot a lot of ability to handle terrain, even with a lot of the maneuverability you get with mechanum. This is one is one of my favorite and definitely well deserving of 17th slot. All right, and that aesthetic of the robot clearly sets it apart against some of mm. the other robots here. And then we're moving on to 11th place. We've got team 791 with members Vincent, Carl, Gary, Noah, and Ryan from FTC team 10237 US Robotics. Overall, we thought that this was a really wonderful robot that was just on the borderline of the top 10 teams. The team's info packet was very, very detailed in explaining exactly what each mechanism of the robot did and how the robot worked as a whole uh, on the field. We felt like this is a robot that could do almost everything on the field, from being able to collect and deposit toxins efficiently to placing lids on the containers. Something we really liked about this robot was the dual catalyst and lid grabber, something that we will see a little bit more of as we get into the top 10 teams. The five servos on this mechanism allow for super granular and precise movement, which means that you'll be able to pick up lids and catalysts with ease. And then, got team. So, yep. In 20th place, we see team 100, which was a one-man team by Robert from FTC team 731. Now, the FTC team is historically has a great aesthetic overall for their robots. And we see that again here with Robert's robot. Um, the intake system, the intake system is unlike anything else we've seen in this competition, it is the most unique and innovative mechanism for intaking. It's the only intake to feature a drop down intake to collect balls on both sides of the robot. <laughs> and then instead of using linear slides, the robot features a vertical four bar to deposit containers. And this robot as well does not have a catalyst connection me collection mechanism, which is a significant drawback. But it's also important to note here that Robert designed this robot while he had two weeks to do it, designed it in less than three days. So great, great job on that. <laughs> All right, next up, we have in 13th place, Team 103 Try Hard Robotics, composed of Wilson, Victor, Jeremy, and Jay from the FTC Team 14417, also named Try Hard Robotics. Um, I really liked how simple this robot was. Um, it was just very elegant to look at, and I think that it would perform pretty well uh, in real life. There were just a couple things that I wanted to point out. Um, for one, I really like how they integrated their catalyst and container intake into just the one claw. Um, that, I think that was just very unique and innovative um, to use the claw to pull it onto the tray, as well as using the claw to pick up the catalysts. Um, the one thing I would note on the catalysts is it doesn't seem there doesn't seem to be a way to pick them up off the ground, which I think would be a very uh, useful thing since they do have a tendency to roll. Um, being uh, not spheres, but tubes. Um, and then the other thing I'd like to point out is just their intake is a little bit uh, thin. Um, I think that it, it's a good intake, but it could use a little more width to be able to intake more toxins at once. Um, but other than that, I really like this robot, and I think it would do very well. Uh, I My favorite part was definitely the renders. They're very well done. All right, next up we have our 21st ranked team. This is team 541. It was composed of, uh, let's see, Ashrak and Gila, Jackie and Eduardo from FTC team 479, Stay Fusion. Um, and I really did enjoy that this team um, chose a lot of different design strategies. They definitely approached this challenge in a way that was very unique to their team. And... Overall, I did like a lot of the aspects of it. 
it used a lot of COTS parts. It would have been nice to see just a little more custom. They'd have a very nice custom six-wheel drive drivetrain. Um, but a lot of the upper components did end up being more off-the-shelf parts. I did. I think this is one of my favorite intakes. Um, that's hard for me to say because I'm super critical of them, but I think this one would do a pretty solid job of intaking toxins and catalysts being mostly compliant wheels. Be a lot of money in compliant wheels, but that part doesn't matter for CAD challenges. Overall, I liked it a lot. Would like to see a little more info in their info packet, but I really did enjoy this robot. Oh, is this me up again? It is. All right. Sorry about that. Next up. Oh, that was my bad. I believe we have 484 up next. <laughs> All right. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Okay. You guys can hear me, right? Yeah. Okay. So in 22nd place, we have team 848 with uh, members Kate, Nikhil, and Philip. From FTC team 7083 Tundra Bots, 6078 Cut the Red Wire, and 16072 Quantum Quacks. And so, something unique that we saw about this robot was its drop down intake mechanism, which allows the robot's intake to reach out beyond the 18 inch restriction and easily collect toxins. And we really liked how the container holding zone was integrated with the lift mechanism and how easily the container itself could be placed within the containment shelf. Something we did notice about the drivetrain is that the middle wheel could not actually be powered in its current state, uh, as there wasn't enough belt wrap to actually power it. But besides a few misaligned bearings and screws in the CAD, we thought this was a robot that could perform very well on an actual field. All right, I think that this one is actually my turn. This is team 551 and they were in 14th place. So this team was made up of RTM, I'm really bad at pronunciations, I'm so sorry, Cecile, Miriam, Dan, and Shishi, oh, man, I'm sorry about that. Um, they're all from <laughs> Team FTC Team 7026, the J-Droids. So I am good at robots, so I can talk about that one. This team, um, the first thing that stood out immediately was that they had very solid renders that really put their robot first. Um, I really love PNG, transparent background renders, because you can just see so much of the robot. Um, and it did a very good job of showcasing that robot. This one was a lot of COTS parts. I really would have loved to see a little more custom, but where they did have custom, it was very well integrated and made a lot of sense in the design. Uh, I'm going to pick on this intake just a little bit, but it's all the same stuff. Probably wouldn't pick up catalysts. Um, their deposit, I think, was very solid. And I like that they're dry free. Yeah. yeah. Let's see. All right. So now we move into 18th place with Team 204. Um, this was created by Thomas and Eric from FTC Team 18246. Um, another robot that does use a lot of COTS parts, but if we were to be making this in real life, there is nothing against using COTS parts, especially for those teams that don't have access to a lot of machining capabilities. And for, those, for them, this would be a great robot. Um, so this really is a design that does kind of the more boxy robots justice. Um, it's got a six-wheel drive drivetrain to cross over the valley quite well and a tr more traditional intake to collect toxins in the container holding zone. Something that could be implemented a bit better was the catalyst claw as it appears to be a little flimsy, especially since the catalysts weigh over a pound a piece. But that mechanism was designed by a rookie and is amazing for a first start. All right, up next in 23rd place, we have Team 596. They are the Badger Knights, a solo team. It's just Greg. Uh, he's from FTC 15772, the Brady Goats. Um, and I really like this robot. Uh, my favorite part was definitely the toxin intake and how it raised and lowered to clear the valley. Um, but I also think that the container intake 
uh, was pretty good too, especially um, how it raised and lowered to uh, get to the different heights of the shelves on that virtual four bar. Um, there are a couple things that I'm going to pick on here. Uh, for one, the drivetrain, um, the Kanti lever on that is a little bit sketchy. Um, as far as I can tell, there's only one bearing, and you want, you always want to have at least two bearings. Um, and then the container intake. Uh, the wheels on that, I'd like to see a bit more surface area because a full container, like I've said before, does get pretty heavy. Um, and it's not bad for a one-man team. It doesn't do uh, catalysts or lids, but other than that, I think it's, I think it's pretty good. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and Tier 2 Plus subscribers on Twitch, keeping fun loud, live, and independent.